started trying to solve this problem. They thought, oh, you know what, you know what, I'll light the match, I'll melt the wax on one side, I'll stick the candle up against the wall, but it still drips down on the table, right? And then people thought, oh, you know, let's see, I'll, I'll try and tack the candle to the wall, and maybe that'll help make it so that the wax doesn't get all the way down to the bottom. Still doesn't work. So sometimes what we think is the problem is not necessarily the problem. And that's what we're going to get into a lot with the hormones tonight is what you think is actually the problem is more than likely just the symptom. And what we're going to get down to is what the actual problem is. All right? So who wants to hear the solution of this problem? Then? I do. All right. So the table is the problem. Yeah. So just get rid of the table. We don't have to get wax on the table, right? So the solution is right here. A lot of people think the box was just sitting there to hold the tax. But if you take all the tacks out, you tack the box to the wall and put the candle inside there, you keep the wax from getting on the table, mm. all right? So that's what we're gonna be moving into tonight is finding out what the problem really is. So a little bit about us. So we are a super highly motivated, dedicated team towards your health. We have a vision and a mission to make sure that you're reaching your highest potential. And if we're not fulfilling our, our mission, then we don't feel complete or whole. And so that's why we wanna keep pushing and tr trying as hard as we can to help you reach your highest potential. That's why we're here late at nights doing these classes. That's why we're here early in the mornings marking x-rays to make sure that you are reaching your very best potential, all right? So that's a little bit about us. This was at our recent seminar this weekend where we learned a lot about um, a lot of these hormones that we're gonna talk about tonight. Um, so our mission, we want to empower longer, healthier lives through chiropractic care and an integration of the five essentials. Now the five essentials, like I was talking about, this is how you're going to get to the solution of all the problems that we have. So a lot of the times we think that our real problem is, you know, a testosterone deficiency, or our real problem is uh, cortisol excess or estrogen excess, when in reality, it's the simple application of these five essentials that is what's gonna be solving that problem for us. So those five essentials are core chiropractic, Nothing is gonna work if your nervous system isn't regulating it and controlling it. Nutrition, you have to have the building blocks to give your body those things that are necessary so that it can continue to heal and repair and regenerate itself. Our body is so amazing. It's a self-healing, self-regulating organism. It doesn't need any help, it just needs no interference. And so that's why we make sure that you're clear through chiropractic, and then we have those, those nutrients that we need to make sure that we can keep healing. Now, mindset is one of the big ones. Um, one of the big ones is whether you, there's a quote that goes, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're probably right. Right? Can I get a, can I get a yes? yes? All right. So just making sure. So if we think that we can heal, we can heal. In my undergrad, we worked a lot on some research at, at the University of Utah where we were training with some of the ski jumping athletes. And to get them to do the jumps and these amazing flips that they would do, they didn't even get to train or do any of those things. We had them sit in a room and envision or visualize them going through doing those flips. So when they went through those flips, they had to bring their arm up like this, like this, to get their body to spin and rotate at 9,000 degrees a minute, whatever it was. And them visualizing that made it so that when they went out to do their first run, they landed it almost every time. So you need to be visualizing in your mind that your body can be healing. If you have torn ligament in your knee, for example. Visual, envision or visualize those fibers sewing themselves back together. Envision that curvature back in your neck. Imagine it as if it were so, and it will become that way, okay? So mindset, make sure you start working on that one. That's probably one of the hardest ones, but one of the most key ones for your health and healing. Oxygen and lean muscle tissue, I hope you followed me on that 21-day challenge. We did a lot of working out there. Um, those those five, that, those quick, Tabata workouts is what's gonna really make it so that you can get to that next level, pushing all those nutrients that you're taking in right here into the tissues. And the last one, minimizing those toxins. So making sure that we're looking at the labels that, of the things that we're picking up in the stores or watching the foods that we're putting into our body because those things are gonna influence your hormones um, like we're gonna talk about a little bit here later tonight, okay? If you need a bigger overview on these, I hold a whole class based on this. So you can come to that one as well. Now, the main hormones that we're gonna talk about tonight, um, there's a lot of them, but the main ones we're gonna focus on are estrogen, testosterone, the adrenal hormones, and the thyroid hormones. These ones are gonna be the biggest ones. They carry the most weight, and they're gonna cause most of your issues that we find around here. 
But again, remember, it's not the problem. These aren't usually the problem. The solution is something different than we usually see. So there will be a test on this later tonight. So everybody got it? We're going to move on? Good. No. So think of it this way. Your brain and your nervous system controls all of these hormones, right? So when they get released, when they get, or how much gets released, your brain is controlling every little bit of that. And this little gland right here, this is called your pituitary gland. It sits right in the middle of your brain, okay? Um, so let's think of it this way. Let's think of it like a symphony. Your hormones are like a symphony. They have to work so that it sounds good. If they don't work in normal orchestration, it's gonna sound horrible, right? If you've ever heard a squeaky violin, you know what I'm talking about. So the hypothalamus, we'll call that our composer. So he's the one that's writing the sheet music, telling what's supposed to be released. All of these hormones up here tell the body how much of each one of these different hormones that we're going to release. Okay? So whether that's um, the testes releasing testosterone, the ovaries releasing estrogen, the kidneys releasing um, uh, a, a, the, their adrenal hormones or ADH, um, adrenal glands releasing ACTH, all of this is being composed or put together by what's called the hypothalamus, and that's up in your brain. It sends that, it gives the sheet music here to the pituitary gland. This is called the master gland. The reason why it's called the master gland is because it's giving that direction to release every other single hormone in the body. All right, so this is how important that one is. So we'll call that one our conductor. It's conducting and telling every other hormone what it should be doing. Now, like I said earlier, it's going to send out messages to release those specific hormones. So it'll tell the thyroid to release how much thyroid it releases, or the mammary glands to release their hormones. So all this has to work in orchestration. Now, are there are things that can interfere with this. Remember the biggest thing, the body needs no help, it just needs no interference, right? So there are several things that can interfere with this. This is in your nervous system, the very middle of your brain. So if that is being affected with in any way, we have interference. Now, the way it communicates out this way um, the way that it communicates out there is through the nervous system. So if there's misalignments in your spine or there's um, tension on your spinal cord, there will be miscommunications in how those hormones are released and in which quantity they are released. So that's why it's important. That's why core chiropractic is right up there to make sure that your spinal cord and your spine are in optimal alignment to be able to be releasing that properly. All right? So... Test on this later. Everybody got all the information? All right. So some of you might be asking, well, how do I know if my pituitary gland isn't working the way it's supposed to be? Or how do I know if all these things are in balance? If you ever get irritated or if you ever have anxiety or depression, if you have fatigue, a lot of our society now deals with this fatigue. So this is going to be a big one that we're going to hit on later. Insomnia, weight gain, migraines low libido, um, digestive issues, or hair loss. All of these things are regulated by the hormones, and the hormones are regulated and controlled by our nervous system. So there, that's our master control system, and that all needs to be working. So if you've seen any of these in your, in your life, we might need to be looking into this direction to make sure that we're applying all of those five essentials that I was talking about earlier. And we're gonna give you some protocols later or some ways that we can address this. But that's how we want to make sure that we um, go through this. It's looking into each of the five essentials to make sure that we're applying those properly. All right? So when we have imbalances, there can be several things that can pop up as a result of that. Now, the big thing to remember that these are all symptoms and they're not the cause. So a lot of times when we see um, a lump in, our, in the breast tissue or if we find um, a lump in our thyroid, thyroid something going on. We give it all these names. The big thing to remember is that it's not really an entity. It's just another symptom of a deeper underlying issue. So if we get these cysts or these gallbladder problems or thyroid issues or osteoporosis, we might think that osteoporosis, that's a, that's a disease. That's something that is an entity. It's something that you can hold on to. It's not. It's an underlying symptom of something deeper that's going on. Does that make sense? So that's what we want to get into is just to remember that all these things are just symptoms of a deeper cause. And we are, so DC stands for doctor of chiropractic, but also stands for doctor of cause. 
we want to find out what's the causing what's causing this that's going on so we can find out how we can correct that okay and actually I take that back I misspoke so we're not actually doing any correction there the big thing is is that we're removing the interference or we're preparing your body so that your body can do the healing that it's supposed to or God can do the healing for your body okay so Big, the common solution for this one is hormone replacement therapy. So if you look at this, Primarin is one of the ones, so for example, if we start to get low estrogen, this is one of the big things that happens. Low estrogen, you hit menopause, and then all of a sudden the doctor says, oh, you have low estrogen, we need to up your estrogen. So they give you this thing, it's called Primarin. Primarin. There's three words in this. Primarin. It stands for pregnant mare urine. That's what it's made out of. So because the pregnant mare urine has high levels of estrogen in it, they thought, oh, you know what, why don't we give the horse a catheter and then we can, we can take that, that thing, concentrate it down, and then give it to a person. We can make it both in oral form and we can also make it in a, like a, a cream form so they can put it all over them, right? Bad idea. But, so what we're trying to get to here is that we want to be as natural as we possibly can. The way that God made your body is, is so that it can heal and repair and regenerate on its own. We don't want to be putting all these external things. So if you don't believe me, there's a cream form of it as well, but there's the horse being catheterized. So we're, we'll move on. Um, and I, all I do is read research. Now that I'm out of school, I get the opportunity to read a lot of research. So it shows that the, the evidence of this stuff, so of this pregnant marrier and of this Hormone replacement therapy, it's actually what's causing increased risk of stroke, heart attacks in females because increasing the estrogen um, causes a lot of damage to the myocardial tissue, the heart tissue. So a lot of research coming out now that it's not the way to go. So going in the wrong direction if we're moving that way. All right, so causes of estrogen dominance, xenoestrogens, we're going to hit a lot on this a lot. Um, so parabens, phthalates, these are the plastics that we see in our, in our food or the bottles that we use. Lavender and tea tree oil are actually hormone disruptors. So if you already have an estrogen issue, look into not using lavender or, or tea tree oil in that sense as well. Excess body fat, um, the hormones in the body fat um, also increase the estrogen levels there as well. And of course, as we know, excess stress blocks our, ability, our body's ability to convert those hormones from cholesterol. And all of our sex hormones are made out of cholesterol. So stress will block the transition or conversion of those hormones into what they're supposed to be, whether that's testosterone for guys and gals um, or estrogen for females. Um, so like I said, it's not just a guy problem. Ladies have e or testosterone as well. And guys, you actually have estrogen as well. So these hormones all need to be in a perfect balance. And if we're finding that there's an imbalance or if there's those disruptors like I was talking about, the, the xenoestrogens, we'll get into that a lot more later. So if there's plastics in your diet or if there's anything else disrupting the balance of those hormone, hormones, then that's where you're going to start to get those um, imbalances. So we talked about this a little bit earlier. So having that excess belly fat blocks the, <coughs> the hormones from being converted and transitioned there. All right, Doc. All right, look at all these happy people right there, right? Do they look happy to you? Yeah? So what do you, what do you notice about every single person that's up there? They're stressed. Do, do they look stressed, right? And how do you know? So think about somebody that's looking stressed, right? If you look at a, a wolf in the wild, what do they look like? They, they come down like this. You, you have a dog that's like trying to protect itself. They come down like this. Even a cat, and even look at this guy. Like if somebody's really, really angry, they come down into this position. And the reason why I'm telling you this is I want you to understand how amazing you are and how perfectly designed our body is. Our body is, what separates us from lizards is the ability to actually come out of that fight or flight, rest and digest. All a lizard knows, it's an individual, its job is just to try to survive on a daily basis. And, and so when it sees a stress, it runs from it. And when there's no stress, it's just resting to get more energy to be able to run from a stressor. Now, it's an individual, but as human beings, well, how we survive is as a group, as, as together, as one. We, we communicate, we reason, we interact, 
We have relationships. We nurture each other. We raise each other up. And it's such a strong drive. It's such a powerful drive that for us to even go into that fight or flight state, what happens is we literally have to mechanically, like literally something has to happen to interfere with our biology so that we can actually go into that lower level lizard state. So what happens is, is that instantaneously, depending on what you see, depending on what you hear, depending on what you smell, what you experience, what you're, what's going on in your environment, if your body feels that it's unsafe at any one time, it's going to immediately tilt that, that, that top bone in your neck, the atlas, up. And so what happens is all these muscles tighten up, it tilts it up, and then it, when it tilts up, it shuts down the blood flow to the part of your brain for social engagement. And you literally lose the ability to engage with another human being. We become reactive. We think short-term rather than long-term. And then when that threat is gone, then we can go back. Unfortunately, what kind of world do we live in? Uh, like, a, like a social engagement. Um, we're connected, but we're less connected, right? Like We don't engage with people the way that we were designed. We don't hug people. We don't, we don't it, like, talk with people. It's really quick interactions. And so the problem is, is that most of us live our life in that place. And the problem is that there's two different types of hormones. You have your stress hormones and you have your connection hormones and then you have your your, your rest and digest hormones. But those, those are, like Dr. Josh was talking about, our whole goal is for us to be able to fully express your humanity and we can't do that when you have 40 hormones and one of them's out of balance. And so that's what I wanted you to think about. So the next time you look at your x-ray, is your atlas up like that? That's a pretty good indicator of what's going on in your life right there. Think of our kids, we're sitting at the computer all day long like this. We're sitting on our phones like this. When you come in, literally, if you're just sitting there on your phone in the, front, in the reception area, you're subluxating yourself. Literally, you're putting your body into a stress state that's completely changing your physiology. Think about, like, and so think, start thinking about how everything has a major impact on everything that we do. So, we live in this fight or flight. What happens is when fight or flight, it's nervous system and then it's all hormones. The nervous system causes a cascade of changes in your hormones that'll, that'll raise your blood pressure, to raise your blood fats, it'll raise, like it'll, it'll give us short-term thinking rather than long-term thinking. It'll sever our ability to have connections. It'll, it'll reduce something called oxytocin, which is our hormone that a mother has to actually love her child or feel connected. It literally interferes with all of our higher functioning hormones and shuts down all of it, our, 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 I mean, increases our lower functioning hormones. The ones that are for survival, those are go up. The things that raise your blood sugar up, the things that you don't that raise your testosterone up, the things that 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 literally like put your foot on the gas and it literally goes at a thousand miles an hour. Those are the, those hormones. And unfortunately, whenever we have one hormone out of balance, how many go out of balance? All of them, every single one. So, here's what happens: you have stress. You guys have all heard of the adrenal glands, right? So this is what it looks like. It's not really blue. But on the outer part of the adrenal glands, you have uh, like what's what, what the outer part will actually release something called aldosterone, and then it'll also reduce something called cortisol. So cortisol's primary thing is to is to raise your blood sugar up. Cortisol's primary job is to also deposit fat in your body there. And cortisol's job is a stress hormone, but it'll also change the, the aldosterone will actually change how your kidney functions. So that what happens is is that it blocks up kidney function so that it'll raise your blood pressure. So has anybody that has high blood pressure, if they ever had a medication that they take to interfere with your body's ability to retain water, they call it a water pill, right? All a water pill is, is interfering with your body's ability to respond to the stressful life that you live in there. See, that's the way that man thinks, right? They're like, oh, we have a problem, we need to lower our blood pressure, let's take a water pill rather than asking why we need the water pill in the first place. So. The other part right here is the adrenal gland. The adrenal gland is a key factor. That's the thing that's your get up and go. That's your survival hormone. But the problem is if you look at all these different stresses that we have in our lives, everything from alcoholism, toxins, oral contraceptive, persistent fears, emotional stresses, poor eating habits, allergies, white flour, smoking, uh, devitalized foods, that is our life that we live in right here. Because of that, none of these things existed for what our body was de designed for. Not one of these things. We didn't. We didn't design. We weren't designed for persistent fear, but so many of us live in persistent fear on a daily basis. Persistent and negative thoughts and stressors are. That's not what we're designed for. We weren't designed for white flour and white flour products. 
this is the world that we live in right here, and what's happened is it's led us to something that we call adrenal fatigue. Literally, our adrenal glands are completely exhausted. And what adrenal fatigue, this is what it looks like. You have that wired and tired feeling. Like you, you, you have to feel like you have to stay up all night, and you can't go to sleep, and then you're exhausted during the day, right? We, we literally will sit up there and watch like, um, like a Netflix series, and we'll watch like five, six series of it, right? Because I'm just trying to put myself to sleep, but we can't sleep. And we just don't have the energy to do that. We know we should do those things. We, we can't think straight, but we're just going, going, going. We're getting so much done, but we're getting nothing done. Has anybody ever experienced that? Right? That, that's like people, that's our world that we live in. We have low energy, inability to handle stress. Literally, we just melt down there. The smallest thing just tips that scale there. So you have depression, anxiety. And guess what happens? We start craving salty foods, and our immune system, because of that cortisol, starts to break down. This, if you look at, this is the average person walking into Starbucks in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening, right? I mean, that's the average person that needs a rock star just to be able to get through their day because our adrenal glands are completely destroyed. So this is what adrenal stress looks like. Like, if you ever, like, just, like, sat there in your car and, like, I'm just going to take a moment, next thing you fall asleep, right? That's adrenal stress right there. And that's a big indicator that your body's literally been, it's, it's almost as if you put your car into neutral, put your foot on the gas, and just leave it on there. What's going to eventually happen to your car? Yeah, it's going well, to run out of gas eventually, but probably you'll burn your engine up first, right? And that's what we do. And so what I want you to think of is this, the, the second thing that we have is that, that we, what happens with thyroid, when we're under stress and our adrenal glands are pumping, 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 that what it does is it actually shuts down your thyroid. Anybody ever been told that they know anybody with thyroid issues there? See, you can't have a high adrenaline and have high thyroid. When your adrenaline's high, thyroid goes low. When the adrenaline's low, thyroid goes high. So the thyroid gland is designed for metabolism. It's designed for uh, like, like, like really your energy maintenance there in your body there. So we get this short-term fix of the adrenaline just to get us out of an emergency, but most of us live our lives in an emergency, and it's only supposed to temporarily shut down the thyroid, but eventually we shut down the thyroid because that adrenaline is so high. And next thing you know, we start getting thinning hair, once again, depression. So two of the symptoms of adrenal stress and thyroid issues are depression. Does anybody know anybody with depression in the United States right now? We're the most depressed country in the entire world. We start losing our memory, right? So we get that stress and that prolonged period of stress, we start forgetting things. We start getting forgetful there. We get weight gain, increased sensitivity to cold and fatigue. All these things start playing together. So you start realizing, somebody says, hey, can I have a, what, what do I do about this? Or what do I do about this? Or what do I do about this? What I want you to do is you need to understand the connection, okay? Because everything's connected. You can't fix some things. You have to fix everything. Because if you just fix some things, you lose the whole big picture. Everything in your body's connected there. So what happens is, is we, you've heard so much about the gut. But in the gut, there's something called the, and I had to write it down. It's the, the it's pronounced it, estrobolon. Okay? And what it is, is that there's hormones, in, I mean, there's bacteria in your intestines that actually just, that, that that break down estrogen. They literally break down estrogen. The problem is, is that when we have too much estrogen, it creates a, symp a syndrome called estrogen dominance. Some of the symptoms of estrogen dominance would be hot flashes. Some of the symptoms of estrogen dominance would be craving of sugars. Some of the symptoms of estrogen dominance would be anger and rage. Some of the symptoms of estrogen dominance are gonna be like swelling and bloating and unable to weight gain, fluid retention and unable to lose weight and, and we start packing on pounds right around the middle there. The problem is Dr. Josh was talking about that we have estrogen dominance. Maybe it's our gut that's not working because then when our bacteria is off, it's gonna throw the, the, our ability to get rid of that extra estrogen. But it also, that estrogen dominance comes from the toxins that we have in our world. We talked about the xenoestrogens. Xenoestrogens mimic estrogen in your body. So your body thinks that it has so much of this estrogen and the problem is, is that you have two major hormones. One is estrogen, which is for growth. And then you have progesterone, which is for shrinking. So if you think of like the, the female menstrual cycle, you have the, the voluptuous growth period of our cycle, and then you have the shrinking period of our cycle there. So we have to have this perfect balance, but as we get older, progesterone drops down, and so does estrogen. But they don't drop down, they, they usually drop down in a ratio. The problem is, is that 
when we have our guts out of balance, the estrogen can't drop down. Now we get a bigger divide. And then when we have those toxins in our environment and in our body, the estrogen will go, will, will start to continue to climb up there. And we have more and more and more estrogen. That's a major issue. And that's where most female estrogen, I mean, most female hormone issues come from is the, the lack of their body's ability to break down the estrogen, but also the lack of their body's ability to detoxify that. If you don't have both of those in place, if you don't have a healthy gut, and you don't, if you're not detoxifying, there's no way in this world that we live right now that we'll be able to uh, um, uh, be, be able to get to take care of that. Uh, estrogen communication. So poor gut health, and I love. I had to write this down here for you. When we have poor gut health, what it'll do is it'll raise the level of, our, of estrogen, and we start having systemic inflammation, sickness, infertility, PMS, low low sex drive, cramps, heavy bleeding, and PCOS. Like. Um, and so that what it does is it, may let, it also lets us be more susceptible to estrogen-based cancers, like hormonal cancers for women now. So literally, like your gut can cause your cancer. Do you understand that? That's how important this is. And when we talk about gut health, it's not something that we have to think about or, hey, maybe I'll try to be healthy in my gut. It's absolutely essential because we have two brains in our body. We have the, our brain here, and we have this brain here. And guess where almost all of the, hormone, the hormones in your body are produced? Your gut, right? All the neurotransmitters in your brain, guess where they're produced? In the gut. Guess where 90% of your immune system is made? It's in the gut. And so when we have antibiotics, and then somebody says they have a hormonal problem. When somebody eats meat that's sick meat, that has like, that, that's like raised in a factory raised meat that has antibiotics in there, you're destroying your gut flora and you're destroy, destroying your body's ability to, to build hormones, to have regulating hormones. Uh, when, we, when, we have, when we're exposed to pesticides and, and toxins, we're destroying our gut on a regular basis. When we're under stress, it makes our intestines more acid, and it actually destroys our body's ability to have the good, proper bacteria in there. So what you start to see is that we look around and we're like, so what do I do, what do I do? So there's something called the five essentials, right? Have you noticed that everything that we talk about, whether I, you have diabetes, it's going to be the five essentials. Whether you have uh, cancer, it's going to be the five essentials. Whether you have a hormonal issue, it's going to be the five essentials every single time. There, there's nothing else but it. Like we literally like try to find me something that you can do to make yourself healthy that's not five essentials. It's impossible. And so when we look at the thyroid right here, um, one of the other things is is that a lot of times when you go to your doctor, the, you know, and somebody has a thyroid issue, they'll say you have high thyroid stimulating hormone, and so but you'll have low thyroid function. And they'll look at this lab test. Did you know that the, the, the usable form of your body, in your body of thyroid gland, the part that goes from, when it gets converted from T, T4 to T3, do you know where that's done? In your gut. So if you have a gut issue, you can't even convert T4 to T3. You go to your doctor and says, look, you have, your, your, your thyroid's working overtime here, you have low thyroid over here, so you have a Hashimoto's, autoimmune disease, and so we have to give you more thyroid there. Let's look to the cause, not the, not the numbers. You're more than a number there. Your body doesn't break down. Your body's incredibly intelligent there. So what are, and then the, the cortisol, by the way, oops, sorry. Cortisol, by the way, will, it, it, it does is it creates inflammation in your gut. That's literally long-term stress from the, will raise your cortisol levels, which will cause inflammation in your gut. But guess what else it does? It actually causes you to crave sugar. And guess what sugar does to your gut? It creates inflammation in your gut, right? It suppresses your immune system. It causes a complete dysregulation of all the hormones in our body. Can you guys see where this is starting to go? We're like, okay, this whole hormone thing that everybody's whacked out on, is there a pill that we can take to fix a gut problem? No, you can't. If you have a hormonal problem, you're trying to raise your estrogen, all you're doing is like creating a, a more estrogen dominance there. You're creating more imbalance, and that's why people go crazy Trying to figure out it because the problem is, like we talked about the last time, our last class about the guy that's looking for his keys, right? And he's looking over here and he's, and he's looking, this guy comes up to him and he says, Hey, uh, what are you doing? He says, I'm looking for my keys. He goes, Can I help? And he says, Yeah, sure. And he looks around for a while and he goes, So where exactly did you lose your keys? Well, they're over, I lost them over there. And he says, Why are you looking over here? And he goes, Well, the light's over here. It's just easier to look at, right? You'll never find the answer if you're looking in the wrong place. And that's what the purpose of his classes are, is to be able to teach you this. Sorry. Cork 
chiropractic. How your body perceives the world, how your body perceives those threats, and your, whether you're safe or not, is through your nervous system. If your nervous system is under stress in any way, shape, or form, literally on a daily basis, your body is going to be under stress. You're going to release all the stress hormones. You're never going to be able to regulate your blood sugar. You're never going to be able to re regulate your hormones. You're never going to be able to regulate your immune system. You're never going to come out of a chronic inflammatory place. It's just black and white. There is no gray in that one. That's why we're always, always, always working on keeping our nervous system clear, getting our corrective adjustments, because in the world that we live in, we're always recreating our subluxation patterns. Our spine is just a reflection of our life. That's why we try so hard to get you to change your life so that you can change your spine. We look at nutrition. There's, there's simple things that we need to do with our nutrition. And I, like, okay, I'll give you an example. If I, you may know anybody with high cholesterol. You ever heard of anybody with high cholesterol? Okay. So if I told you that if you ate a stick of butter for 90 days, your cholesterol levels would go completely normal, you would think I was what? Crazy. 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 But that's what, the, that's what the research shows. Now, would you do it? No. Most people wouldn't. But they want, I want my cholesterol to be low, but I don't want to eat a stick of butter. See, the thing is, is sometimes we've got to do the hard thing. Does that make sense? Sometimes we've got to do things that might little be a little uncomfortable. What are some of the excuses about eating a stick of butter? It doesn't taste good. I can't imagine eating a stick of butter. I don't like butter. Like, where do I get butter? What kind of butter, right? But something as simple as that could radically shift your cholesterol levels because they have something called conjugated, conjugated linoleic acid in there, CLA, which literally will fix all cholesterol problems there. But then you, people choose to take their cholesterol medication, lose their mind, lose their hormone, and cause complete imbalance in their hormones, and they cause that normal. But then they just get to a point in their life where they don't even remember who they are because they just didn't want to eat butter for 90 days. Just a thought. So we, no, I'm not going to be talking about eating butter tonight, by the way. I just had to throw that out just as a thought because sometimes people say, I can't do this or it's too hard. Then that's your choice. That's your excuse. That's why you are the, where you're at right now because of the excuses that you've made over the last 10, 15, 20 years. So if you want to keep your excuses, then you keep your problems. That's just the facts. So yes, it's hard. It's supposed to be hard. Hard things, are they, they give you a good result. Easy things, that's just like going in and out. That's an easy thing there, right? Easy thing is to keep doing what we're doing and expecting a different result there. Mindset, your big why. I want you to think about this, and we'll talk about this in a second. But the why you do things is the most important thing. So why is, give me a reason why you guys are here. Just somebody. Better health. Better health. Okay. So you want better health, but why do you want better health? Feel better. To feel better. And why do you want to feel better? We're going to keep working to this. Live a full life. To live a full life. Keep going. Why do you want to live a full life? Life's so good. Oh, no, keep going. So why do you want to live a full life? Stay healthy. I want yeah. to live longer. And what, what, what's the benefit of you living longer? Yeah. Reducing your potential. But have you noticed that we get to a point when it, it's about us, right? But if we take it to the next step, you want to live longer, but you want to see your daughter for longer? Yes. Right? Like, we, we, like our, in our families, right? Uh -huh. We find that any time that your the why is about you, it's short-lived. Every, every bride is able to get into her wedding dress, right? Mm -hmm. But very few stay at their wedding dress wait. Because it was all about <laughs> them. Does that make sense? Like, we can always do something on the short term when it's about us. But when it's about somebody else, when we do something for somebody else, then we'll never break our why. And I think that's the thing where we have to know, know is that we've got to get our mindset bigger than ourselves on that. So oxygen and exercise, you, you, you can't regulate your hormones without moving there. And we're looking at minimized toxins. We live in a toxic world. All these things are throwing off our body on a daily basis. So that's why we have the five essentials. So here's your reboot plan. And it's really simple. The first thing that we want to do, I call it, I, I call it the eliminate the wrongs and add the rights. Okay? So we need to eliminate stimulants. They're going to be things like caffeine, anything that stimulates your body. They don't give your body energy. They actually, it's a temporary fix to give your body a stimulation for so it perceives that it has energy. But anytime you do that, you're robbing your body of energy and it's creating a cascade of, of like negative changes that you actually have to fix the damage later on. We got to look at what we can do to get rid of stress in our life. And we're going to talk about that later. We got to look at what, like what we can do to minimize the effects of the things that cause civilization in our life that are interfering with our nervous system. 
And then what we gotta do is we gotta look at our diet, we gotta look at our supplements. That's it. So it's, these are the, the really the five things that we gotta look at to be able to make the changes. We gotta eliminate the wrong, add the right. So coffee. And I know, Doctor, if you guys ever talk to uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Sherry, he's got a really like cool thing about coffee. But the, the main thing that I, that I want to get to you about coffee is that it increases estrogen. It literally creates a, an estrogen, increases the estrogen in your body. But what it also does is that it, it goes, hits your adrenal glands, and then it gets you that fake high, creates, creates an estrogen imbalance there. And then the problem is, is that um, when we have that estrogen, that, that high levels of estrogen, it creates a chain reaction all the way down. It also hits your adrenal glands and it raises your cortisol levels, it raises your blood sugar levels, just by having a cup of coffee there. And so if somebody's a diabetic, they're like, I can't figure out why my blood sugar won't go down, but if you're drinking two, three cups of coffee a day, there's no way that your blood sugar can regulate because you're constantly under stress there. And so we gotta really, if we're gonna hit our, our, our balance out our hormones, we gotta literally nip coffee at the bud there. Um, coffee is, uh, it's, it's, um, it is devastating when it comes to hormonal regulation and balance there. Sugar, yes, ma'am. Okay, what's the difference with um, like the green tea? So you green tea. White so we, I prefer you go to herbal tea, but if you're like in between and your body's freaking out, go to green tea. Okay, like I would say stick with water because we always talk about 90 percent of all dehydration of, of energy issues initially is 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 correlated directly with um, um, dehydration. Yes. Uh, that, that helps, I mean, that's great. Um, it's, it's good of the bacteria, but it's not a hydration. You don't drink kombucha to get hydrated. You fix, drink kombucha to get, fix your gut. Right, but it's made out of tea. Right, so yeah, so probably, you know, I, I'm not a big fan of like, I mean, kombucha is okay, but we add too many things into it for the most part. And look, if we're trying to fix something, there's a lot of like, what ifs, does that make sense? So I would just say, what if you stay away from caffeine? Anything with caffeine in there, right? There's a lot of easier ways to get the bacteria in your intestine. Oh, by the way, sugar, you know what it does? Besides wreaking havoc with your blood sugar levels, sugar actually reduces something called sexual binding globulin. So when you have extra hormones floating around in your bloodstream, it interferes with your body to take the too much of a hormone and actually keep, your, keep it from like being expressed in your body. So if you have too much estrogen, normally what your body would do is raise something called sexual binding globulin, and then what happens is is that it actually like you won't, your body won't it'll bind it so your body can't use that estrogen there. So if you have a hormonal issue, you have to get rid of sugar. But guess what happens when we have hormonal issues? We're like sugar, right? Right? Give me more sugar. Um, in fact, what they find is that women that um, when, during their menstrual cycle they consume on average 270. 70% more sugar than they normally do. Because what happens is that increased estrogen causes us to, to crave the sugar. The sugar then messes with our body's ability to, to regulate estrogen. And then all of a sudden we get these big, huge estrogen rushes where like our hormones are like this during the PMS cycle. We're like, I need sugar just to keep from killing somebody, right? Uh, and then what ends up happening is it makes it 10 times worse. So the worst thing you can do during a PMS cycle is to actually have sugar. Um, sugar also, will interfere with our body's ability to produce healthy estrogen, but also sugar will also um, support, will support, increase our testosterone. It'll actually increase testosterone in men, and it will create almost like a, like a testosterone type rate there. Um, I just wanted to make sure there's a couple things I wanted to say. So the biggest thing I always hear from people is that I don't eat sugar. Uh, I really don't eat sugar. I, Dr. Osborne, I have a healthy diet. And I promise you, if I followed you around on a daily basis, um, we'd have a different discussion there. Um, and, and, it, and it's the truth, because we, we just don't know what we don't know. And that's why, you know, you have your Align Your Health book, that's why you have these classes, that's why we have the handouts, and everything that we do to make that awareness. Like, like I talk about this every time, like sugar is the devil. Like sugar wreaks havoc on every single thing in your body, and everybody always has this excuse, but I love sugar, I love my chocolate, I love my bread, I love these things. And we love these things that destroy our body rather than the habit, loving a healthy body. Rather than loving being able to feel great and live a long, healthy life so that we can experience all that's on this planet for us there. So you look at something, but I don't eat sugar, it's everywhere, right? It's in our pops, it's in our, you know, our candy bars, and it's in our fruit. Look, 
Like we eat way too much fruit. Fruit creates a huge hormonal imbalance when we eat too much of it. If you're gonna eat fruit, only eat what's in season. Maybe a cup a day. But most people are like, I put like all kinds of peaches in my smoothie. They're like, I'm doing everything they say, Dr. Osborne, and then they put like five cups of uh, peaches in their smoothie in the morning, right? And then like next thing you know, it's like, well, some strawberries are good. Let me just put the, this whole rest of the bag in there. You have to know that like we have to have a balance in there. And if you're having hormonal issues, you have to completely eradicate sugar at that point. So let's look at some of the examples here. And I, I wrote this down. So uh, this, this cereal right here, this is all bran. 14 grams of sugar. Wow. This right here, 13 grams of sugar. <laughs> so like, I don't eat donuts. Yeah, you do. It's just in a different form, right? We look at look at this. A couple slices of bread right here. Uh, we look at our, a couple slices of bread. Pepperidge Farms whole grain honey wheat bread. Um, it's eight grams of sugar per slice. This is eight grams of sugar right here. Isn't that crazy? I know it's going to find out. It was a hard research to get these donuts together. I'm doing research there. No, I'm just kidding. But just look at this. Like, we're like, I'm doing something healthy. Yes, it's better than whole wonder bread, right? But any, any kind of breads, pasta, cereals, white grains, all those things will wreak havoc on our blood sugar. How about Odwalla? I'm trying to get healthier. Give me a guess of how many grams of sugar are in the Odwalla. 48. More. 44. More. More. 54 grams of, of, of sugar in an Odwalla. So I know I'm trying to be healthy. It doesn't matter. Your body doesn't care. Sugar, sugar, no matter what it is. So if you're saying I'm only eating, I'm only eating fruit sugar, you're a diabetic. It, it, it'll create diabetes. That's why like there, it doesn't matter. It's oh I don't eat corn syrup. Yeah, but you eat the same amount of sugar. It's going to have the same effect in your body. And so when we're looking at trying to be healthy, we have to realize that there, we need to minimize the amount of sugars in our diet today. So hormone rebooting eating plan. Absolutely have to remove sugar. Literally, if you were to take a challenge for 30 days, remove sugar, remove caffeine, remove fat, rancid fats, because remember, your body, the hormones are made up of fats, right? So if you're taking in like rancid fats like canola oil and corn oil and soybean oil, your body has nothing to build healthy, healthy hormones with there. You're eating French fries, that stays there, that'll stay there for a month and a half, wreaking, hormone, wreaking, wreaking problems with your, with your hormones there. Think about that. Like if I, I'm eating a bag of potato chips when I'm when I'm like when I when I like if I'm PMS, I eat a bag of potato chips and I want that salt and that crunch, right? Next month I'm paying the price during my cycle for eating that bag of potato chips that I ate during this cycle there. And we're wondering how we can't get out of this cycle is because it takes time for our bodies to recover. I talked about somebody that when we're talking about gut health, somebody's eating bread, right, and they have gluten intolerance. Well, one of the challenges with gluten intolerance is the moment that you eat gluten, for the next two months, you're producing the gluten antibodies that create inflammation throughout your whole body. And it takes between three and five months after that for your body to get rid of those antibodies. So you, if, you have, if you eat right now and, you, and you're, you're, you have gluten intolerance or you have a sensitivity or you have leaky gut syndrome and you're eating food, it takes five months for your body to recover. So don't tell me what you're doing right now. Hey, the last week I did everything right, and look, it doesn't work. You have to understand that with, like, when a woman has stress, it takes, and they start to lose their hair. It's not the current stress that they're under. It was the stress between four and six months ago that caused them to lose their hair. So, so much of what happens is not cause and effect. It's what we did in the past that leads to a problem way in the future. So we have to get out of the mindset that we don't do this as a therapy to treat something in the moment. We do this as a lifestyle so that we can take care of the problems in the future there. Oh, let me go back here. Uh, adding in good coconut, which is good, like good, uh, like it's good fat. Pumpkin and sesame seeds will help regulate our hormones there. Avocados are great fats there. Organic eggs, um, the good news is in California, eventually we'll have organic eggs coming out of our wazoo's there. Uh, the cruciferous vegetables. Just get into common sense, but if we can just remove the bad, add the good, we're going to be in a really great place on this. So what here's, is, what yes. Is the inflammatory foods? Or is that the inflammatory foods? Right. Breads, pastas, cereals, sugars, um, you know, like bad fats, um, like anything that comes into a package. Like if you have to take it out of the package, 
you can pretty much guarantee that it's going to be a bad food for you. Okay, that's an inflammatory yeah. food. Uh, so I want you to look at this real quick. Tell me what you guys see. Flat tire. What do we need to do to get going? <coughs> Fill it up there, right? And then, and so that is what the medical approach to treating these problems. You have low estrogen. What do we do? Fill up the tire with air, and eventually, what's going to happen? The tire goes flat again, and then we fill it up, and eventually your doctor is going to say, "Hey, I'm going to give you a reoccurring prescription for uh, air pressure," and you just keep going up and down, up and down. That's kind of what our lives are. You have you have diabetes. Let's fill up your tire with insulin air. You have you have a thyroid problem. Let's fill up your tire with uh, thyroxin air, right? Like that. That's the problem is that we're trying to fill up a leaky tire. Nobody ever asks what caused the tire to leak. And it doesn't matter if it's a bolt or a nail or a screw or some, you know, like, what was Dr. Josh joking about? That it's like an angry you know, ex-girlfriend. An, an angry ex-girlfriend <laughs> slashing your tire, right? The, the problem is this, is that the, the, there's still something causing a leak. You've got to find the leak, fix the leak, pump it up, and keep you going like that, right? So that's what I want you to think about. Is your, do you have a leaky tire lifestyle right now? And you've got to fix the holes. If you don't fix the holes, it's going to keep leaking the other. So mindset, what I want you to think about is your big why. you got to work on your big why every day. The why you're doing. When you're putting something in your mouth, why are you doing that, right? When you're, when you're, when you're exercising, why you're exercising. That, think about those things as you're doing the good things, and think about the things as you're doing the bad things. And as long as we have a plan, as long as we, our why is strong enough, we can get through any adversity on that. Number two. I mean, on, on that, I always talk about we don't focus on stress management. We focus on peace management, the things that we can do in our lives that bring peace. We can't get out. We can't get away from stress because just as, think you, just as soon as you think you got it all figured out, somebody hits your, like, like, like dents your car, right? Just as soon as you think you got it all figured out, you get a bad boss at work. Just as soon as you figure it out, your internet goes down at home or you drop your phone and you break the glass on there, right? Like those things happen. Life's going to happen around us. And that's what we want to focus on is peace management. So we got to be aware and conscious of how we deal with the stresses. Do we do things like eating, like going out, like when we're in stress, do we eat? Do we go drink? Do we go smoke? Do we go eat bad food? Do we go wallow in our stress? And all those things do is create more stress. We just got to focus on finding the good, though, right? There's always going to be good things and bad things. And so if we can focus on finding the good, then we're going to be in a really good place. Uh, the biggest thing that I always talk about is how you find the good is have a space between what happens to you and how you respond to what happens to you. It's in that space between stimulus and response that you find your freedom. We stop being reactive. When we stop being reactive, then we start making better choices. So before somebody, like you, your, your, your new boss says something to you, take a breath, right? Your, the kids are in the car and they're screaming, and before you scream back at them, take a breath. It's amazing what oxygen does to the brain. So we talk about box breathing. If you ever want the box breathing handout, we have it up at the front desk. Um, but this is what I want to have you focus on right now. And this is how we can deal with stress management. We just got to get our quadrants right. Has anybody ever heard of like uh, Frank, uh, Stephen Covey? He talks about these quadrants, right? This is our, we have like the four quadrants. We have crisis with all the pressing problems and all the deadlines and then the driven quadrants. Yeah, we got to deal with those things. The problem over here is that those are urgent things. Number two, we have like what's called the not not urgent. Yeah, like me actually sitting down and having a like a good conversation with my wife, that's not urgent, right? That's not like life threatening. Uh, but it's important. But and if I don't take care of it, eventually it's gonna become an urgent situation. Does that make sense? <laughs> like like me paying tax me preparing my taxes is not an urgent thing in January. It becomes a uh, an urgent thing, uh, 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 April 15th, right? So this is what we have to do is start having our plans there. Then we have to look at the things that are activities that interrupt us. They're the urgent things, like that, the texts that pop up in your phone all the time, right? Now I have a, my, my Mac, and it pops up my phone. It rings on my Mac. It rings on my iPad. It rings on my, like, like my phone. Like, literally, when, I, when somebody calls me, the whole house started to, like, ring. It was driving me crazy there. So, so we get our emails and the meetings that people want to have and, you know, like this is the things that the social media and the pop-ups and all these things that are, that are like right in our face, but they really have, are not important in our lives in the grand scheme of things and we have these active activities that, 
that are that just time wasted, right? TV, um, you know, like like sitting there flipping through 400 things of Instagram there. So if we were to try to avoid stress, we spend all of our time in the important time. Look at what if your life was how much time is spent on the important things, the urgent and the non-urgent thing. And if you spend more time on the non-urgent, then you don't have as many urgent things. I will challenge you on the new iPhone update, it actually lets you track how long you spend online and where you spend most time at. So if you watch it and you look at it, you're gonna throw up. You're literally, like if you do the math, it says, oh, you're spending uh, 12 hours a week surfing the internet. That means that every four weeks, that's 48 hours. That's a whole work week. That means that like literally 50, like 12 months, yeah. is literally like that three months of work is spent doing nothing. That's crazy when you start thinking about it in those terms there. Exercise and oxygen, there's no better way that to, to, to create havoc with, it, with your uh, hormones than not exercising. There's nobody that can have per balanced hormones without exercising. In fact, they find that if people exercise 300 minutes a week, um, they, they, there's very little to zero probability of them having a hormonal issue. Now, I'm gonna suggest that you don't have to exercise 300 minutes a week. I would say like 30 to 40, and if you just do surge training, what surge training is down, designed to do is to regulate and balance your hormones there. How cool is that? Just 10 minutes or 12 minutes a day, and you can regulate and balance your hormones. The cool thing is, is that um, when you do that, what happens is, is the fat that we have, it actually, you're, when you have fat, your body will actually, will, will ha it, like estrogen is produced, fat produces estrogen. So if you're having a hormonal issue and you have fat on you, you're producing estrogen. The more fat you have, the more estrogen is being produced, the more estrogen dominance is being produced. So it's not just the, 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 the surge training, it teaches your body to be a fat burner so you can get rid of that fat, so we can get rid of the hormonal problems there. And then this is the big one, minimize toxins. I can't say enough about this. Ever since we did the detox project, I've been obsessed with getting rid of toxins because once I just dive into the rabbit hole, it's overwhelming to think about the toxicity that we have in our life right now. Literally just the, the, from the, the, the laminate floors, I got this, these laminate floors from uh, li Lumber Liquidators, and then I had, they, they, they sent me money in the mail because it was a class action lawsuit that the floors were toxic. So literally I had to go in there and use a special cleaner to clean all the toxins that were leaching out of the floors. I had no idea. But the, 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 the phthalates that were leaching out of there, the PVCs that were, that were leaching out of there, that were going into my patients, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I almost ripped it out until I found this product that actually pulled them out of there. But think about your house and the, the carpet that you have and the, 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 the flame retardant that we have and the, the to toxins in the food. You have to detoxify on a regular basis. There's no way about it. Anybody that doesn't detoxify, they die at an early age. That's just the way it is. When we have one or two people that are having heart disease, which is an inflammatory issue, and one or two, two out of three people, met, I mean, one out of three having cancer, it's no surprise that toxicity is a major issue there. So I always talk about, I wrote down here, like choosing your hormone-free meats. If you're gonna eat meat, you better eat clean meat. There's no way you can detoxify from bad meat there. Using your glassware rather than plastic. <coughs> As much plastic as you can stay away from, including the water bottles at the store, like anytime you have a chance <coughs> to choose anything other than plastic, our bodies don't know what to do with plastics. They just stay in there, and plastics are one of the worst hormone disruptors, uh, disruptors there. Plastic bags that you put your food in, guess what? The plastic goes onto your food, and you eat your food that's been in a plastic bag. So what do we do for years and years with our kids? We put all their, their, their peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in plastic bags and the white bread with the, the sugar jam and the peanut butter that's made with uh, soybean oil. And uh, we put them in there and like, have a healthy day. And now we're trying to figure out why they have hormonal issues, they have diabetes, and they have like, like all these kind of issues there. We didn't know, but now you know, now you know. Um, like looking for like bleached papers, like coffee filters. Another reason to stop with coffee there. Uh, switch to, uh, like even something as simple as like a, a sanitary napkin. Did you know that the, the, the sanitary napkins, the, 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 they, they bleach the, the, the sanitary napkins that literally leach right into your body creating major hormonal issues and pre predisposing you to cervical cancer. Um, and solvents, women, like nail polish. Have you ever gone into a nail polish like salon and had your eyes melt out of your head? Like there's nothing good about being like nail polish. You have to make better choices. Even like your lipstick that you put on your mouth, 
and that you know red number 72 or whatever it is that looks so good on you like literally you're licking it on a daily basis it goes onto your teeth and you're literally taking in phthalates and, and like and toxic substances mainlining into your body the reason why i bring this up is that we have to be constantly aware and if i kind of freak you out that's actually kind of my job today right i really i, I kind of wanted to freak you out on that because if, if I don't, who will, right? It's easy to be able to be like, just like sitting there with our head in the sand. And so that's what this is about. It's about, like Sherry, I'm in. Yeah, you are. Uh, but it's all about getting, uh, having a plan. And Dr. Sherry's gonna be talking about the plan. So my job is to talk about the problem. Dr. Sherry's about the plan. And, and well, go ahead. Right. Are you ready? Because I'm a little over. Yeah, no, <laughs> that was, uh, so it's so interesting since I moved over here. For those of you who didn't know, I moved my practice over here what, about six months ago or so. So whenever I would do workshops, I did the whole workshop. And I know it's baseball season, but I've been standing over in the bullpen, and it's a very surreal thing to be standing over there waiting for the ninth inning to come in, right? <laughs> so I want to open. How many people know what I'm going I'm to go through pretty quick, okay? I literally probably have like six pitches, and I'm going to get three outs, right? Uh, how many people know what TED Talks are? Right? TED Talks are where people get up and talk about things. And I want to share one with you before I jump into this. Because my job tonight is, yes, I'm going to talk about turtles again, for those of you who know what I'm talking about. I'm also going to talk about lifeguarding again quickly. I'll retouch on that. But I listened to a TED Talk the other day where this professor was talking about what he teaches his class in college. And he was talking about how the human brain works. And he said it's very interesting because as human beings, we have a trait in our brain that we're supposed to worry about whatever you hear about. Whatever you hear about you're supposed to worry about. And his example was, thousands of years ago, as a group, we would all be sitting around the fire, and we might say, Rog saw a lion today down by the river. And we would all say what? Lion is in the area. Be aware of lion. You should be concerned about lion. If the next day, Dr. Osborne showed up and said, hey, I saw another lion eating a, uh, eating a gazelle over by that tree, we would all be very alert of what? Lions. Lion. Right? It's part of how our brain works. Notice nobody was worried about bears. You know why? Nobody has mentioned bears. Nobody's mentioned bears. So the human brain will latch on to whatever you hear about. And the professor said, this is an amazing thing our brain has. And it served us very, very well for thousands of years until a newspaper showed up, until television news showed up. And he says, I tell my students, if it's on the news, don't worry about it. Because if it's on the news, it's extremely rare. That's the definition of news. Today I was talking with a patient, and we were talking about how we were in Atlanta over the weekend, and it's the first time I've been back to Atlanta, Georgia, since the Olympics. I was at those Olympic Games. I was walking through the Olympic Park three days before the bomb went off. You guys remember when the bomb went off? I had just gotten back when the news flashed that a bomb exploded, and I thought, oh my gosh, three days ago I was walking right past that garbage thing. It was very surreal the other night. I walked, the cinema was over, and I walked by myself out so weird. I walked through this just three days before a bomb went off. And the patient said, isn't it weird how today it's so scary, how you don't know where you could be if something can blow up? And I thought, isn't it weird how our brain is so afraid of something that isn't really going to scare do it? That's not what's going to do us in, right? And what this professor said is he told the students, don't worry about what's stuff on the news. Worry about stuff that's actually going to affect you and your family. Car accidents, health things, toxins, hormonal problems, spinal problems. Those are the things, heart problems. The things we're talking about tonight are really the things that you should be thinking about and processing, right? That's really the stuff that's gonna bring you in. And before I move on, I'm gonna tell you one more thing about Dr. Sorensen. He said, you wanna know how your brain works? He said, get a Dixie cup. Have your friends spit in your Dixie cup and then tell me something. Isn't that weird? It was just in your mouth like two seconds ago. Your brain is all pre-wired for those type of things. I thought that was so interesting when he said it. He's like, we all have that reaction. We all have that <clears throat> but he goes, it was just in your mouth from two seconds ago, right? Our brain has all these pre-programmed things in it. So tonight, really quickly, because I've got to move fast, I need to get the answers here. I get to wear the white hat, okay? And the white hat is, what do we do with these hormonal things? What actions can we take, not only for you, but for other people? For those of you who remember, I was a lifeguard, and what did I say? Lifeguard saves lives. They told us in chiropractic college we were going to save lives. I didn't believe it. Until I flash back to that really old lifeguard, remember the 25 year old lifeguard, ancient guy, who said, if you're a really, really good lifeguard, you will never have to save anybody. Because you'll do it before it happens. He also taught me, he said, if you're a really good lifeguard, you won't save anybody. Also, if you're really lucky, you'll have other people who will help you on the pool deck. 
Now, I never lifeguarded at a beach, but at a beach, other people are really, really important. Some of my best friends lifeguarded in Santa Barbara, and when I talked to them, they made a lot of saves at the beach in Santa Barbara. And I said, how did you see them? And they said, well, when the waves are going and stuff, you look, but you can't really see people. You can't see the people who need help because they're up and down the waves. And people are swimming, and they have a huge area to cover. I said, how do you know? And they said, almost every time, somebody else ran up and told us. Somebody else told us the person that was drowning, and then we ran out and saved that person. And tonight, as I go through this, I know you all want to save people. Uh, one of the worst stories I ever heard was an NFL football player who died trying to uh, save two kids. As a lifeguard, I was stunned that this man had jumped into a river that was spinning. Two kids had jumped in and got caught in a whirlpool and were drowning. This man, who was a professional athlete, jumped in to save these two children. He heard a lot in lifeguard, and then he drowned. The kid drowned, and so did he. He drowned. And I thought, wow, what a horrible story. At the end of the story, it says, oh, yeah, by the way, he couldn't swim. He couldn't swim. He jumped in to save two kids. And I know we all want to help people. And I'm going to show you that your friends and your family are having these problems. And they're so busy worrying about a bomb blowing up and killing more car accident. And really, these are the things that are going to affect their lives and change them. So let's go through these slides a little bit. First, I want to show you how this works. In your body, you have an endocrine system. And the endocrine system is all the glands producing these hormones. And our body's interesting because we have this system. If you can imagine, these are all factories, and they all produce hormones. What's crazy is hormones are chemical messengers. And the messenger gets produced at the factory, and it goes around and affects the whole body. And the question is, why does the body need chemical messengers when you have an internet system? When you have electrical impulses that travel at 260 miles per hour? Your nervous system is lightning fast. When the hormones are released in the blood, they travel, guess what, a whopping two or three miles an hour in the blood. That's how fast it goes. Now, that's kind of quick. If you inject something into your blood, it can get to your brain in about, what, a couple of seconds. That's pretty fast. And if anybody's ever taken that, you know, if they ever knocked you out, you put it in, they say, what, count down from 10, and you go, what, 10, 9, 10, 9, you get it? Yeah, two or three seconds, and it gets to your brain and shuts you up. It's pretty fast. But the body has a nervous system that sends out impulses to control that whole system. See, we advanced to a point where we have a supercomputer that controls all of these individual factories and tells them how to work and tells them. If the tennis shoes are being made down here, the supercomputer is telling them how many tennis shoes to make. If the supercomputer can't tell them how many tennis shoes to make, guess what? It does one or two things at the factory. They either say, keep making tennis shoes. What the heck? Let's just make, we, we make tennis shoes. Let's make them. Or it says, I guess they don't need tennis shoes anymore, and we stop making tennis shoes. It doesn't matter whether we make an enormous amount of tennis shoes or we make no tennis shoes. You guys get this? Whether we make an enormous amount of hormones or we make no hormones, it's bad for us. Too many tennis shoes, bad. Not enough, bad. The nervous system oversees this whole system. That's the key here. Take a look at this. Up in the upper part of your brain is where serotonin receptors are. Serotonin is a very, very important hormone. It runs a lot of things. They say it runs the five Fs. There's one that comes down here. It runs the five Fs. Fight or flight, that's the stress, right? It triggers cortisol. Cortisol is the great stress hormone. When you get under stress, the body has to produce it. And remember we talked about stress the other class of the other day. We talked about stress reaction to the human body is not an option. If you ever want to know how stress affects you, just envision you're being attacked by the biggest grizzly bear in the world. And say, how fast do you think that system has to fire? fires massively. Every, your body thinks you're being attacked by a Brazil, I mean a, a beast, every single time. When you miss the stoplight, you go, shoot! Your body goes, oh, we're being attacked! And it just fires all the hormones, not a little bit, massively and rapidly. It affects your body and how quick. The hormones are released within what? A minute or two, right? And it has to because your body thinks we're about to die. So the, ser the serotonin up here in your brain, notice where it's all, look at that connection down to your spinal cord. Serotonin oversees controlling cortisol. Anybody ever heard of cortisone? Cortisone is just synthetic cortisol. That's all it is. And cortisol, we need blood, quick side note. When you're under stress, your body makes glucose immediately. You need blood sugar. Cortisol dissolves tissue and turns it into glucose. That's how it works. Cortisone injections are like nuclear strikes. That's why they say don't do more than like two or three in your elbow. It gobbles up all the tissue. It just dissolves it. It's like a nuclear strike. That's how cortisol works. Cortisol is very powerful, and serotonin oversees it. 
However, if that nervous system can't control it, you don't get a lot of tennis shoes or you get too many tennis shoes. Too much cortisol or too little cortisol, very dangerous for us. All right, that one's over. Whiplash. Now we get into the spine. We know we have a lot of whiplash injuries, right? The hippocampus, uh, this HPA is a system, we're gonna, I'm gonna get rid of fancy terms because we're running out of time. The HPA system is a series of three organs that respond and create response to stress. What we know for sure is when your spine looks like this, when that upper part doesn't move right, when that upper part of that nervous system is stressed, that can't fire. You start making what? Too many tennis shoes or too few tennis shoes, right? The cortisol is you're making too much or too little because electrically the, the supercomputer can't tell it what to make. TexNet. Now, that says TexNet, but the federal government doesn't call it TexNet. You know what they call it? They call it Tech. Because it's from just sitting at a computer and looking at your phone. For those of you who know, the government changed the name of this condition from forward head posture to tech neck about 10 years ago. And the government knows it's a massive problem. You know why? When I started to practice 25 years ago, I would see people in their late early, maybe uh, late 20s, early 30s like this. Now you know what we see? 12 year olds like this. We should put up the x rays. We should just run them and show you guys. We should cover up the names and just flip through and go 10 year old, 12 year old, 13 year old, 10 year old. And you watch all the reverse cervical. And if you don't want to see the x-rays, just go out there and look at them. Yeah. Just go look at them. Go to the DMV. I was there for like six hours. Right? <laughs> I, just, I just swung by the yeah. DMV, right? <laughs> Who knew I liked it so much? I said there was six hours. Just look at everybody, everybody, right? We're all looking down, reversing this curve. The problem is, is when you reverse the human spine like that, the nervous system, the spine actually gets traction. Everyone take your hand and put it like this. Take a look at that. You see the folds in your palm? That's what your spinal cord is supposed to look like. Now, let's lose the curve. Straighten it out, look at your hand. What's it doing? It's tractioning the cord. Let me give you an example of what a traction cord or nerve does. I played football in high school. I didn't know what I know now. If I did, I wouldn't, okay? But the first injury you learn as a football player is they call it a stinger. Anybody ever heard of this? A burner, anybody heard of that? Right, as you're a freshman in high school, they say, Someone says something about stinger, and you go, oh, a bee. And they're like, no, 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 it's not a bee. Oh, what is it? And they go, it's the air flowing gas. Okay, I'll find out. And so the first time someone comes at you, and you go to hit them like that, and they take your shoulder and drive it that way, and your head goes that way, you traction what's called the brachial plexus. That's Latin for big arm nerve. You take that nerve, and you traction it. Guess what happens? Your arm goes completely dead. The nerve shuts off. Watch the NFL games. You'll see it all. every Sunday, a guy gets off the field, and here's what it looks like. This is what I look like. Every guy looks the same. You get off the field because you can't use this arm, and they'll be bent over holding their arm, and they'll run off the field like this. A complete burn. If you traction the human nervous system, it shuts off. Those are acute, quick traction. That curve is a tractioning of a spinal cord, not quickly, but very gradually and slowly. Slowly, instead of yanking the nerve and shutting it off, you're just slowly stretching it and shutting it off. That spinal cord is not only round, it's now oval because it's being stretched around that curve. When you guys leave this, the first thing you're going to look, because I know right now you're thinking of friends and family, right? You're thinking, oh my gosh, they should be here. Just look at their posture. If they're like this, they're doing traction. The other thing that's happening is the upper spine is going into extension to cover this. Everybody ever seen this guy walking down the wall? Okay, his, he's actually trying to recover. He's falling so far forward that his head is trying to look up. He can't anymore. You know why? He's in complete, you guys see that? That's where he is. He's up here, okay? I'm not gonna cover that in too depth, but hopefully you see that. When that happens in the upper spine, it actually creates like a guillotine effect on the upper part of your brain. Your brain stem gets caught in that. So not only are you traction your nerve, you're putting pressure across the brain. This is all supposed to be running these hormones. So the question is, when you see your friends and family like that, the question is, well, when should we tell them? As a lifeguard, when do you blow the whistle and tell them to stop running? As a lifeguard, at what point do you say, hey, you should not be in the deep end, right? At what point do you tell a friend or family that's enough is enough? Here's the warning signs when people are subluxated. When their nervous system isn't working right, when the number one symptoms is headaches, menstrual problems, high blood pressure, depression. If you go down this list, these are all classic ones. When people come up to you and say, oh, how many of you guys know this, right? You're saying, oh, what's wrong? I have a headache. Did you go to chiropractor? I don't do that. I love this one. I don't believe in it. I love that. I go, yeah, I don't believe in gravity. 
It doesn't change the fact that gravity works, right? I mean, you throw a rock out the window, it's going to go down, right? It doesn't change the fact. It doesn't matter if they believe it or not. It's here and it works by taking the pressure off of that. Those are the warning symptoms you want to look for your friends and family, okay? If these are happening, the hormonal system is also struggling. All right, here's some action steps that we want to do. First of all, anybody that, let me make sure I'm on my cards, I'm throwing them all over here. Hold on, I missed anything. Okay, action steps. First thing, if you're a lifeguard, you remember, okay, my turtle story, okay? Remember the turtle story? Anybody remember the turtle story? Am I the same thing? Okay. okay, so the turtle story was this, and I'll, I'll tell you what the, I won't go through the whole story. The turtle story was one day I thought, what if every day we're born, and you're born, Turtles live a long time, right? If they gave you a baby turtle and they said, here's the deal, you get perfect health your whole life, would that be cool? Here's your baby turtle. But the day the turtle dies, you die. How would you treat the baby turtle? <laughs> yeah. You'd treat the turtle pretty well, wouldn't you? You'd feed it really good, right? I'd even teach my turtle how to swim just in case it fell into a puddle somewhere. <laughs> like, I, would take that, I would take good care of a turtle. Right? The turtle would be on the leash. I don't want to get by a clown, right? The turtle's not falling in a manhole. I'm taking good care of the turtle, right? And if we all looked around, if we all had turtles, wouldn't it be interesting to see how we judged other people, how they took care of their turtle, right? Like, can you believe they're letting that turtle walk on that hard asphalt when it's things outside? Like, you've heard, like, we would all look. And you all know that people are abusing their turtles all the time, right? And you've got to help these people because they don't realize that when the turtle dies, they die, right? They're not even getting check. So in our office right now, what we do for you guys tonight is anybody that you know, or if you're a guest, getting your spine checked for $100, not the normal, you come in, we'll do all the tests. But here's the deal, and I was told that no exception to this, you know, I don't get to make decisions. There's no exception. If you schedule and pay tonight, you come in, we go through the whole thing. And there's a couple of guests, you're welcome to do that. If there's friends or family that you're thinking of, and you want to be that lifeguard, you just have to tell their name and get it up here and get a 10 county schedule for them, and we'll get them in for the and I say that because I've seen people whenever we the other night we did a talk where we talked about like why Dr. Josh and I and Dr. Osborne are chiropractors. And all three of us I thought it was interesting said a very similar thing, right? We all said, because when we see people who die or have problems, we wonder, could we have made a difference? Right? As a lifeguard, could we have made a difference? That's the question, right? What if I was there, could I have saved it? Right? That's the question we always want to ask. So that gift is out there for you. Now, we made this quick. We bundle this up for you guys. If there's an estrogen problem or you're suspecting an estrogen problem, we put the products together that support that. Okay? I left that sheet up there. So if you're interested, we bundle those up. You can go up. Here are the great things. We've already, I'm not going to go through the products, but there's the best way to support estrogen level. We also, as Dr. Osborne talked about, you have to avoid the ones, the Xeno ones. By the way, Xeno is Greek for false, okay, or foreign. So it's just a foreign or a strange hormone-like product in the body, okay? Testosterone. The cool thing about testosterone is exercise makes a huge difference for us, all right? So for, and trauma is males, but stress, under stress, your body uses cortisol and everything, it shuts down sex drive, it drops down testosterone production. Nobody is in a sexy mood when you're being attacked by a grizzly bear. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say no, there's always an exception to the rule. <laughs> Just for in case you're out there, but that drops. The, but exercise is amazing for that. As you exercise, testosterone production goes up. And again, we bundled up the group. You go up there. I shouldn't say bundle up. Doesn't matter. But those are the products we pack together that supports testosterone production in the body. You need the precursors for these hormones. Okay. The omega fatty acids are the, what the body uses to make a lot of these hormones. If you don't have them, if you don't have them. You're going to drive yourself crazy trying to get better because you can't make them. Thyroid. Thyroid is the thermostat in the body, right? Turning it up or turning it down is important. This has a ton to do with weight gain. People go, I've been trying to, I've been trying to lose weight, I lose weight, I can't lose weight, I can't lose weight, I can't lose weight. And you go, it's because your thyroid's not working. That's the one that sets the temperature. <laughs> and if you don't give it the right things, it's not going to work. you got to stop the gluten. I think Dr. Osborne talked about that, right? you got to stop. you got to do the things that you need to do to support these uh, hormones. And adrenal fatigue is the big stress one, right? Adrenal fatigue, majority of, I guarantee right now, if I gave you guys stress tests on adrenal fatigue, almost every one of you would do that, okay? I'm gonna give you one, grab a piece of paper and write it down, if you want. You go home tonight, you take a flashlight, okay? 
go into the bathroom, close the door, shut all the lights off, take the flashlight, stand in front of the mirror, wait for about 30 seconds. Your eyes will completely open up and dilate. Take the flashlight, turn it on, lean towards the mirror, and aim the light not in your eyes, but across your eyes, and watch the pupil. And that's a stress response. If your adrenal gland is firing fairly well, the pupil will tighten up and stay tight. That's a sympathetic function. Keep the light on there and just keep looking in the mirror and watch it for like 30 seconds to a minute. If it opens back up, your adrenal glands are shot. If it flutters, your adrenal glands are shot. And by the way, I'd love to be with everyone in the room here because almost all of you are going to see that. Your eyes are going to go, Woo! and then they're going to start fluttering. Because your adrenal glands are so fatigued from all the stress that it can't do that. You're going to, or what you're going to do is you're going to tell your adrenal glands, I need 100 cases of uh, shoes. And it's going to go, okay, here's, here's two cases. Your heart's at 100, you say, sorry, we, we don't have any more. Like, it's, we're too fatigued with the fasting, okay? So the workouts are important. All of this thing, support that. Take a look at those. And no sugar. Obviously, Dr. Oswald touched on that. Are the search really trainings actually yes. good when you have the adrenal exhaustion? Yeah, you want it. You serve, you, the motion is key. I don't have time to go into it. But when you fire, when we move, you guys are all motion machines, man. You're beautifully designed motion machines. And when you move, you fire up a canoceptor motion move, and it calms your brain down. It's great for us. It's great for us. Motion is really the key. By the way, you want to know where most of the mechanoreceptors in the human spine? 50% of them are right in your spine. Or in your body, they're in your spine. 25% in your neck. 25% of those motion nodes that calm us down in your neck. When you reverse the current, you're going to fire them. That's another reason stress goes crazy on us. Okay, last slide for me is I want you to be a lifeguard. I and Dr. Osborne and Dr. Josh, I can't run the whole beach. I can't. It's impossible. I need your eyes. I need you guys to find the people who are in the waves who need help. I can't do it alone. We can't sit here in this box and expect them all to show up. I need you to go out and share the information. The other night, remember I said, once you see it, you can't deny that you saw it. Once you know it, you have to tell other people. When you see that head jutted forward and you hear all those symptoms, you're going to go, you know what I think is going on? I think your nervous system is not communicating with the hormones and you're not making hormones and that's creating a problem. Last quote. This is the Lorax from Dr. Seuss. Don't get it. From, you guys remember the book, The Lorax from Dr. Seuss? Okay, if you don't get it, it's a great book. The quote at the end is huge, right? What does he tell him? He said, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's just not. So go out and help us, guys. Thanks for coming. I know you're really late. <laughs> All right, so I, I, what we're going to do is something a little bit different than we've done in the past. Um, we, we, we're setting up a little web page for each class, and then it'll have the videos, it'll have the PowerPoints, it'll have the notes on there for you. So we don't have to email it, we'll just be able to send out a link there. Um, and then we'll also put the sheets on there that for each of the different products if you have questions on how to use them, what they're for. That way, you know, you'll have like almost like a whole class uh, page there. You want to share it with somebody that's absolutely fantastic um, if you want to watch it again that's great just so you know it's next wednesday dr josh uh, we this, have wednesday. The, this wednesday we have the five essential starter class uh, we call it the get it started class the quick start class the remember what you forgot class it's the it's the it's the just that <coughs> review so you can just really get re-engaged there and then on november 7th this is my uh, my favorite class we've been preparing this one for a couple months now diabetes uh, we call it sugar crush uh, and the reason being is, is that we want to teach you how to like break that sugar addiction. Like if you got a sugar addiction, we're going to be covering that. I mean, there's basically if you want to cure diabetes, um, I'll just say just don't eat sugar, and then we're done, right? But we, there's a whole bunch of other stuff in there. I need you to understand that it's more than just a blood sugar issue. So we're going to dive deep on that class, uh, and that's going to be on November 7th. This is a big one for us every year because guess what happens after November 7th? Sees candy, right? Like it's, it's big time. We got dinner. We got we got uh, we got um, literally everything. Just so you guys know, uh, with this class will be an hour and a half class. It'll just be a little bit longer, almost the length of this class. This one's uh, just we're gonna plan for an hour, but it'll go an hour and a half. So um, is that okay with you, Doctor Sherry? I'm an hour and a half. Okay, good. We just found that there's just too much uh, information that we want to share, and we just don't want to rush through anything on you guys. So get your resources. If you have questions, you get to the protocols there. We'll make sure you get those for you. Um, the, the videos will be there. Um, and like I said, if you ever need anything, every one of my team is, uh, is here for you. By the way, just make sure when you see Alyssa, give her a hug. She uh, uh, decided to come back and be with us. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
it wasn't it wasn't about me. It was about you guys. That's why she's here. So um, I, that's you guys make a difference not only in each other's lives but in our lives. So I thank you. All right, let's get home. Hey, let's get home. Oh, you got it. Thanks for the shout out.